We are traveling the whole country, doing shows at night for grown-ups, two-hour shows, just the two of us, at beautiful performing art centers and theaters all over our country, even Alaska and Hawaii. But we also get to travel the world, flying to meet various cruise ships, and doing our show as the voyage goes from ocean to ocean. It's pretty fun and pretty exciting. And we call ourselves Two on Tap. That's right. And this wonderful gentleman to my left, his name is Ron. And it's a beautiful day and he keeps me smiling. Her name is Melissa. And what we do is something called Duo Song and Dance. Now, duo is just a fancy word that means two. Makes sense. And song and dance, well, it's singing and tap dancing at the same time. Right. Now, the singing you're familiar with, of course, you probably sang at some point today already, but the tap dancing is maybe something some of you haven't seen before. So let me show you the bottoms of my feet. All right. So you see here, I got metal plates screwed into the bottom of the soles of my shoes. There's an aluminum tap on the front. This is the ball of my foot, so we call it the ball tap. In the back, on the heel of my shoe, we call that the heel tap. Now, Melissa's got high heel tap shoes to match all her pretty costumes. Same thing, just the heel tap is a little smaller. And we are performing in the same style that would be familiar to you if you were, you know, maybe 70, 80 years old right now. <laughs> because this was a very popular form of entertainment for your grandparents or great-grandparents. Right? That's right. Special couples like Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, um, Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland from The Wizard of Oz, and also Sid Charisse and Gene Kelly from Singing in the Rain. That is right. Just to name a few. That's right. And what we're doing today is we're using all the wonderful music that these couples loved to sort of educate you about some wonderful musical ideas. Yeah? And so now I think we are ready to launch into our first musical idea of the day. And that is the motif. Everyone say the word motif. Motif. Now I love that, it's a motif. Well, a motif is just a musical idea that comes back again and again and again in a song. Now, an example would be a song like Happy Birthday to You. Gosh, how many times have we sung that song? Well, da 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 and the words Happy Birthday, gosh, they come back again and again and again in that song that is the motif of Happy Birthday. But today, we're going to introduce you to our song and dance motif, and it is Shave and a Haircut, Two Bits. Everyone say that one. Shave and a Haircut, Two Bits. One more time. Shave and a Haircut, Two Bits. Excellent. Now, what the heck does that mean? Well, to find the answer, you have to go back all the way to the year 1899. And back then, two bits was a funny slang way of saying 25 cents or a quarter. So if you can imagine shaving a haircut, two bits, you could get a shave and a haircut at the same time, and it would only cost you a quarter. Well, things are a little different now, but that motif lives on through song and dance. So let's split the group in half. You guys are going to be my shave and a haircut folks. Yes, and you guys will say two bits with me. All right, here we go. Shave and a haircut, two bits. 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 Excellent. Well, in song and dance, we don't only use our voices to make music, we also use our feet. So listen to Melissa say the motif, shave and a haircut, two bits, with her tap shoes. Did you hear it? Yeah. Shave and a haircut, two bits. <laughs> There it is. So now pay attention to this next song. We're going to perform a number for you called Cloudburst that is full of the motif, shave and a haircut, two bits. Listen for it. I was blue and I was always wearing a frown because my love has turned me down. Then we met and you can bet I knew from the first you were my love because that's when the old great cloud
their height. You can either say they are tall or short. Exactly. Well, in music, we can do the same thing. We can talk about whether pitches are high or low. Exactly. And the word that we use to describe this in music is pitch. Everyone say the word pitch. Pitch. Pitch is just a word that says whether music is high or low. Now, we can use our voices, of course, to make sounds. Let's have everyone use your voice to make a high-pitched sound. make some very high-pitched tap sounds. And now I can use my heel taps on my tap shoes to make some much lower-pitched tap sounds. Tap shoes have pitch as well. Now I think we're ready to move on to our next musical idea. Again, this is one you use all the time. Say you need to get somewhere really soon. You might go outside and run very... Exactly, but look, we get to an intersection, gotta be careful, we need to go a little more. Exactly, well music can go fast or slow as well, and in music we call this the tempo. Everyone say the word tempo. Tempo! Exactly, that's just a word in music that says whether we're going fast or slow. Now I can use my voice to make some very fast tempo singing, here I go. If you have some sense of your let's my feet. But I can also use my voice at a much slower tempo. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high. Now, of course, in song and dance, we make sounds with our voices and our feet. Exactly. I'm going to take the easy one. Listen as I use my tap shoes to make some slow tempo sounds. Now, Melissa, you up for it? She's going to do some fast tempo tap dance sounds. Pretty great, right? Give her a round of applause. All right, now you've got to pay attention because this next song we have for you actually has a change in the tempo. The tempo at the beginning of the song is different from the tempo at the end. So pay attention, we'll talk about it later. This is My Romance Heartbeat. My romance doesn't have to have a moon in the sky. My romance doesn't need
the song slow or fast? Slow. So, exactly. And by the end, were we going slow or fast? Fast. Fast. You guys are masters of tempo, which means we are ready to move on to our third element of music. And this is another one you use every day. Say you're home and you're listening to some music, your favorite song. So you want to hear more of the music. So you go up to your computer, your MP3 player, your iPod, or whatever, and you grab a little knob, and you turn it to the right, and all of a sudden, the music starts to get loud. Wow. Wow. Exactly. Now we got too much music. We're going to grab that knob, we're going to turn to the left, and now the music might get a little soft. Exactly. Well, in music, we can talk about loud and soft, and this word is called dynamics. Everyone say the word dynamics. Dynamics. Word in music that talks about whether we are loud or soft. Now, in music, if you look at a piece of sheet music on paper, you might see some Italian words, words like, well, forte, and piano, and mezzo piano. These are all Italian words that tell us about the dynamics, but English words work just as well. You can say, play this song very soft, or play this song very loud, or what have you. Now, here's a fun one. But you guys are going to be great at this. Everyone use your voice to make a very loud sound. <laughs> Not surprising. You're very good at that. All right. And now let's use our voices to make a very soft sound. Excellent. That was very soft. All right. Tap shoes have dynamics as well. Listen to my big clunky tap shoes. Makes them very... Oh, you know what? Let's start with the sweet one, right? Let's start with those sweet little tap shoes. They can give us some soft dynamic sounds. Yeah, and my big old tap shoes, they can make much louder sounds. Did you hear the difference? All right, well then we are ready to move on to our next element of music. This talks about the color of the music. Right. Music has color? Yes, music absolutely has color. Otherwise, if you're standing in front of an orchestra, listening to all of the instruments play the same note, your ears would be able to tell the difference between the pianos, the flutes, the violins, the cellos, what have you. And the reason why is because each of those instruments produces a different color sound. And in music, we call this timbre. Everyone say the word timbre. 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 The timbre talks about the color of the sound. Now, I can use my voice to demonstrate some timbre to you. Listen as I use my voice to make a harsh, annoying timbre, almost like an alarm clock. And now, on the same pitch, listen as I change the timbre of my voice only to make a sound almost like an owl or a ghost. All I did was change the timbre. And in song and dance, we make sounds with our voices and our feet. Feet, exactly. Melissa's tap shoes can demonstrate timbre as well. She's going to use her ball taps together to make a metallic, bright timbre. But she can also tap the leather of her shoes together to make a much duller timbre. There you go, timbre, the color of the sound. So now take a little moment and listen to a piece of this next song. Grab your coat and get your eyes now. side of the street is one that was very popular for your grandparents, your great-grandparents. And the reason why is because it is one of the songs in the Great American Songbook. I can check that out of the library, right? I don't think so. No? You can't? No. Oh, no. Because the Great American Songbook is not an actual book. It is a name we give to the group of songs, all written by American composers between 1920 and 1950 or so, that were so popular that back then everyone knew the words to every song. Now we're going to use Sunny Side of the Street to talk about our next element of music. Everyone get yourself snapping in that same tempo as Sunny Side of the Street. Nice. Ooh, you 
guys got it. It's good. We're all feeling the pulse of the music. This is sunny side of the street. Now that pulse is called the rhythm. Now, everybody say rhythm. Rhythm. Everybody say rhythm. Rhythm. Nice. Very good. That rhythm is the pulse. It's how we feel music in our body. And we can feel rhythms in groups of two beats, three beats, four beats, any number of beats. But today, we're just going to focus on a few of them in song and dance. So let's start with our two-beat rhythm. Everybody clap your hands. Pass the back. Let's put it all together. Watch as Melissa dances a simple march in a two-beat rhythm. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Great. Now I think we're ready to move on to our three-beat rhythm. Everyone clap your hands. Clap your back. Clap your back again. Let's put it all together. You guys got that three beat rhythm down. Listen to Melissa dance a step in a three beat rhythm called a waltz clog. One, two, three, one, two. called the waltz clog because it sort of mimics the feel of the waltz dance in the ballroom. Almost all waltzes are written in a three beat rhythm. Now we're ready to move on to our four beat rhythm. Everyone clap your hands. Back to again. Try it one more time. Let's put it all together. Very good. Excellent. Now let's do a dance in a very fun tap dance step in a four beat rhythm called the military step. One. change it up and do something unexpected. It's called creating an arrangement. Everyone say the word arrangement. Arrangement. Arrangement is just when you take rhythms that you know and explore them and have, have fun with them. And today, we're going to do that by exploring a song that you all have known since you were itty bitty wee ones. Well, you guys over there, this is like so old news for you, but it's a good musical demonstration, so let's all do it together. Get going in a four beat rhythm, and then we're going to join together in a particular song you know. Here you go.
cultures of Africa, the first culture we know to have contributed to tap dance. Everyone hold up two fingers and say two. Yeah. The second culture we know to have contributed to tap dancing is from the land across the Atlantic Ocean, the country of England, and a region of England known as Lancashire. And in Lancashire, they would put some heavy shoes on their feet and do a loud dance called clogging. So Lancashire clogging, the second culture we know to have contributed to tap dance. Now we're gonna hold up three fingers and say three. Melissa's arms are straight down by her side. Her body is very straight. She's doing very fast footwork in front of her body, to the side and behind. That is the traditional dance from the country of Ireland. Irish step dancing, also known as river dance. You may have heard of that. That is the third culture that we know contributed to tap dancing. Now, we talked about it being a uniquely American dance form. Why is that so special? Let me ask by a show of hands how many of you have seen or heard of ballet dancing? Almost all of you. How many of you have seen or heard the classical music played by the orchestra, flutes, violins, cellos, oboes, basses? Yes, all of you. Well, these are wonderful forms of music and dance, but they come to us from Europe. When our country was colonized, those colonists brought their favorite music and their favorite dance along with them. Dances that were created in 1500s, 1600s. But tap is different. Those three cultures that we talked about, they met in cities like Chicago, New York City, and they blended together to create a brand new form of dance known as tap. Now there's another American musical form that you all might know. How many of you have heard of jazz music? Jazz is another uniquely American form of music. And jazz and tap go together brilliantly because they both deal with intricate rhythms and they're both very contemporary forms. Now, we're gonna do a little jazz piece of music for you. And before we get there, we're gonna talk about one little element of jazz called improvisation. Everyone say the word improvisation. Improvisation. Any older kids over there who can give me a definition of the word improvisation? Raise your hand. Yes, right here in the purple. That's Making right. it up as you go along is a perfect definition for the word improvisation. This next dance we're going to do for you has a middle section that is full of improvised tap dancing. It's written in the jazz style, so that's what we got to do. We will let you know when it's coming. We are making up the steps as we go along. This is Just You, Just Me. Just you, just me. Let's fire the cozy spot too. I can't think who. Just us, just we. I miss an awful lot. My trouble is you.
talk about our last two elements of music. And instead of talking about them, I think I'm just going to show them to you. I'm going to sing a little piece of a song I sang earlier, one that you know. Pay attention to it if it sounds slightly strange or different. <laughs> Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there Melody. Everyone say melody. melody. Melody is the tune of the song, the idea that you know, the part that you hum when you're walking down the street. That's the melody. Let's all sing together a little bit of the melody of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Somewhere. Yeah, 
Yes, right there. Yeah. What is your favorite song? What is our favorite song? What's our favorite song in the show? In the show? Um, I like the song Just You, Just Me, the one that we did all the improvisation. I love to sing jazz music, and it's also fun to improvise, so. Uh, my favorite is a song you didn't see today. We actually created a holiday show, and for it, we created a big Sing in the Rain medley. You guys, have you ever seen Gene Kelly with the big umbrella doing his big rain number? We yeah. do kind of a little thing like that. I never thought I'd be able to tap dance well enough to do that song, but I guess I'm kind of doing okay. You nailed it. I nailed it, she said. <laughs> okay, great. Right. Well, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna leave you with one more song today. This is another big hit from the Great American Songbook. This is L-O-V-E.